Have you ever noticed how crucial communication is in our everyday lives? I mean, whether you are chatting with friends, sending an email to a colleague, or leading a team meeting, clear communication is key to getting your message across. In today's fast-paced world where teams are spread out across different locations and time zones, and we have got more communication tools that we know what to do with, Effective communications can sometimes feel like a bit of a juggling act. So in today's video, we're diving deep into the world of communication, specifically how leaders can up their game and become master communicators. Because this is one skill you don't want to overlook. Stick around as we unpack six game-changing tips to help you maximize your communication skills and take your leadership to the next level. Now, when it comes to communication, less is often more. Yep, you heard that right. The key to getting your message across loud and clear, whether it's speaking or writing, is to keep things simple and to the point. So, before you dive into any conversation or send off that email, take a moment to think about your goals and your audience. What exactly do you want to say and who you are saying it to? Having a clear idea in mind will help you stay focused and ensure that you include all the important details while cutting out the fluff. Oh, and speaking of fluff, watch out for unnecessary words. They might sound impressive, but they will just end up confusing your audience. Let me tell you, winging it might work in some situations, but when it comes to communication, proper preparation is key. I'm talking about knowing exactly what you're going to say and how you're going to say it before you even open your mouth or start typing away on that keyboard. But here's the thing. Preparation goes beyond just rehearsing a presentation. Oh no, it's much more than that. It's about thinking through every aspect of your communication, from start to finish. Let's say you are preparing for a performance review with one of your team members. Take a moment and jot down some concrete examples of their behavior to support your evaluation. Trust me, it will make the whole process a whole lot smoother. Or maybe you're gearing up for a salary negotiation. Well, it's time to do your homework. Know exactly what you want, be ready to discuss potential compromises, and arm yourself with all the relevant details to support your case. And hey, don't forget to brainstorm potential questions or objections that might come up so you can tackle them head on with confidence and clarity. Now, suppose you are in a meeting and you are delivering what you think is a brilliant presentation. But here's the thing, your words may be saying one thing, but your body language could be telling a completely different story. Yep, that's the power of non-verbal communication. Our facial expression, our gestures, and body language can speak volumes, sometimes even louder than words. Studies show that non-verbal cues can have a whooping 65 to 93% more impact than your words coming out of your mouth. And get this, if there is a disconnect between what you say and what your body language is saying, people are more likely to believe the non-verbal signs. As leaders, we must become master at reading non-verbal cues. For example, if you notice a team member crossing their arms or avoiding eye contact during a discussion, it could be a sign that they are feeling uneasy or disagreeable about something. But it's not just about reading others' body language. We have got to be mindful of our non-verbal cues. After all, our body language should always be in sync with our message. If there is a mismatch, it can confuse or even erode trust within our team. You know how they say it's not just what you say, but how you say it? Well, they are onto something. Your tone can make all the difference in how your message is received. Think about it. Have you ever been in a situation where someone's tone completely change the meaning of what they were trying to say. Maybe they sound sarcastic when they were trying to be sincere. Or maybe they came across as angry when they were just trying to be assertive. Between you and me, this is my biggest problem. Hopefully, these recommendations prevent you from making my mistakes. Your tone includes volume, projection, and intonation. Basically, how you say the words. And here's the thing. Tone can add power and emphasis to your message or it can undermine it. This is especially true when it comes to workplace disagreements. A well-chosen word with a positive tone can build trust and goodwill. 
while a poorly chosen word with a negative tone can lead to misunderstanding and conflict. Now, controlling your tone in real time can be a bit tricky. However, being mindful of it can help you adjust on the fly if communication seems to be going off track. And when you are writing, like emails or messages where you got a bit more control over your tone, take the time to read over your message and think about how it might come across the reader. You might even want to read it out loud or get a second opinion from a trusted colleague. And if things start to get heated in greeting communication, don't hit send right away. Take a step back and let your emotions cool down, and then revisit your message with a fresh perspective. You will be surprised at how much little tone adjustment can make a big difference in how your message is received. Communication isn't just about speaking. It's also about listening, and I'm not talking about just hearing what someone else is saying. I'm talking about truly, really, actively listening. Listening can be harder than we think. Studies show that we only hear half of what someone else is saying during a conversation. That's why mastering the art of active listening is so important. Active listening means giving the speaker your full and undivided attention. It means clearing your mind of distractions, judgment, or counterarguments. One way to show that you are active listening is through your body language. Keep your posture open and positive. Make eye contact and not alone to show that you are engaged in the conversation. And here's a pro tip. When it's your turn to respond, try to paraphrase or rephrase what you heard. This not only shows that you were paying attention, but it also helps ensure that you understood the message correctly. Oh, and don't be afraid to ask open-ended questions. These are questions that can be answered with a simple yes or no, and they are great for getting the speaker to expand on their thoughts and feelings. When it comes to communication, emotional intelligence is key. But what exactly does that mean? Well, emotional intelligence, it's all about understanding and managing your emotion. It's about being aware of how you feel and how those feelings might affect your interactions with others. Leaders with high emotional intelligence tend to be better communicators. They are able to engage in active listening, maintaining an appropriate tone, and use positive body language all of which are crucial for effective communication. For example, let's say you have to deliver some tough feedback to an employee. By empathizing with them, by actively listening to their perspective and showing that you understand their feelings, you can make the conversation a lot easier. It's still not going to be easy, but showing empathy can go a long way towards smoothing things over and avoiding misunderstanding. So if you want to be a better communicator, start by building your emotional intelligence. Trust me, it will make a world of difference. If you want to learn other key skills for leaders, I suggest you watch this video. Thanks for watching and see you next week.